Hi everyone, welcome to my undergraduate research presentation. And today we are going to be talking about the development and composting of cellulose-based bioplastic derived from hemp fibers. Today, plastic is one of the most used materials in the world due to its versatility and low manufacturing costs. Plastic has proven to be beneficial to the population, however it comes at a substantial cost. Plastic is one of the most harmful substances for our planet in terms of biodegradability. Tons of plastic materials are thrown away yearly and end up in landfills where they can last for hundreds of years before degrading. Plastics are also composed of petroleum-based compounds that release harmful gases during the degradation process that contaminate the Earth's atmosphere. So why is hemp bioplastic such a good alternative? Um, to start off with, it is naturally grown at a cheap cost. Hemp only takes about three months to fully grow and reach maturity. Um, hemp bioplastic also reduces the amount of waste material while still providing a product that allows the same benefits as regular plastic. The presence of oxygen and nitrogen in the natural polymers can be broken down by microorganisms like bacteria and fungi. Um, and it also includes this carbon negative cycle. Within this carbon negative cycle, um, once the degradation process ends, the material is actually broken down into water, carbon dioxide, methane, and biomass that can actually give back to the environment. So let's just move right on into the methodology. Um, this procedure was adapted and modified from development of cellulose-based bioplastic from corn stalks. Essentially, I followed the same procedure, I just replaced the corn stalks with hemp. So I ground the hemp into a powdery substance with a food processor um, and then extracted the cellulose using acid hydrolysis um, with sodium hydroxide and sodium sulfite. Um, I then moved in to the xanthation process where I essentially vaporized the cellulose with carbon disulfide um, and this created a viscous material. Um, so then I stored it in a media bottle for 24 hours in a fridge. Um, the next day I came in, poured the viscous on slides treated it with chemicals such as ammonium sulfate, sulfuric acid, um, and a glycerin solution, and then I air dried the sheets for three days. So after my three days of air drying were up, I had discovered that my sheets um, were successfully made. Um, I expected them to be more of like a cellophane material, but they were actually very styrofoam-like in their texture and feeling. They were very lightweight, they were foldable, they were strong, they weren't very flimsy. Um, all around, I was very happy with the success. Moving into the data analysis, I wanted to compare my bioplastic viscous to a reference sample of plastic uh, using FTIR analysis. Um, my research is still ongoing, I haven't actually had the chance to get in and use the FTIR. Um, just due to weather and conflicting schedules. Um, but this is a reference FTIR of plastic from the literature. Um, and essentially, I'm looking for a broader peak um, in the circled region just due to thickness and um, my bioplastic having more functional groups such as alcohol and carboxylic acid. To determine if my bioplastic sheets were biodegradable, I made a homemade compost bin. My compost bin sat for about two and a half months to make sure it would be ready for this process. I pre-weighed three bioplastic sheets and three everyday plastic sheets before placing them in the compost bin. In four weeks, I revisited my sheets and re-weighed them to see if there was a decline in mass that would prove biodegradation had began taking place. Um, and it is also important to note that this process of data collection is still ongoing. I received my first four weeks of data and would like to continue um, collecting data until my bioplastic sheets are completely uh, biodegraded. So here are my four week composting results. At the top, I have a little table showing my bioplastic sheets and my regular plastic sheets. Um, I have the starting mass for both before composting and their mass after four weeks of being in the compost bin. Um, so as you can see in the figure, um, there's already been a decline in mass for my bioplastic sheets and not much of a decline um, in the regular plastic sheets. 
So I was really excited to see these results and see these this biodegrading taking place um, so quickly compared to the regular plastic. So just in a four week span of time, my bioplastic sheets have already began to biodegrade while the regular plastic sheets have not. Um, my research is still ongoing, so I would like to see some more biodegrading results to determine how long it takes for my sheets to fully degrade. Um, however, my hemp bioplastic has already proven to be a more sustainable approach to everyday plastic, and in the future I would like to see our society stray away from the petroleum-based plastic um, that is so heavily used in our everyday lives. Um, the petroleum-based plastics really do harm our environment, and it is extremely disheartening to see all the pileup of um, landfills and the plastic along the sides of the road and in our waters. Um, so I think if society could implement biodegradable plastic, um, it would really give back to our environment instead of harming it. Uh, future research on this topic could include creating different forms of bioplastic, uh, like Ziploc bags, grocery bags, trash bags, and even plastic storage containers. Um, there are some companies that create these products but have actually patented their techniques so others cannot use them. Um, in my opinion, this kind of contradicts the sustainability approach by limiting our use and creation of biodegrading plastic. So I definitely would like to see some more um, implementation of this plastic in the future. I want to end this presentation by giving a huge thank you to the team putting together this undergraduate research day at the Capitol. I'm so appreciative that I was selected to present my research and so excited that I get to share it with you all. Um, I also wanted to give a huge thanks to Dr. Mark Flood and Christy Henson in the Forensic Science Department for being the best advisors and best educators I could have ever asked for. Um, without their help and guidance, I truly do not know where I would be today. I also wanted to thank Dr. Matthew Scanlon at the Chemistry Department for being my research advisor. Um, I know he has a very hectic schedule and I'm just so appreciative that he worked with me and assisted me in the lab throughout this entire research project. Um, I wanted to thank the team at New Harvest Botanicals for gifting me the hemp fibers as well as encouraging me to actually pursue this research. Um, and I wanted to give my last thank you to the NASA team for giving me the research grant that made this all possible. So a big thank you to everybody and thank you for watching this research presentation.